Are you thinking of switching from an electronic lock to a mechanical lock for your gun safe? In this video, I'm going to swap out a lock on a safe. The lock I'm installing, a Big Red safe lock. This is a three-wheel lock. They also make four-wheel locks. And the company also engineers locks that are resistant to manipulation. You can find videos online that go over the process of swapping out locks on safes, but I'm going to follow the instructions that come with this lock to the letter. Also, a word of caution, I don't recommend that you try this unless you are mechanically inclined. For this demonstration, I'm using this Rhino Metals Longhorn Strongbox Model 1818. For the record, there is nothing wrong with this safe, and there's nothing wrong with Rhino Metals either. They are not willy-nilly handing out override codes or reset codes to just anybody who asks for them. So there's no immediate security issue with this company. I'm using this safe because the bolt mechanism in here is relatively simple, so this should be easy to do. These entry pads are usually just held in place by sliding over a couple of bolts in the door. So you know, these locks all occupy what is referred to as the same footprint. They tend to all be the same dimensions. They're all mounted in the same way, in the same locations. In this particular device, the swing bolt is facing downward, and that's what stops the bolt work here from moving. This lock that I just removed was held in place by three screws right here. But the safe manufacturer was thinking ahead. They drilled and threaded a fourth hole so that you can swap out this lock body with another lock body that takes four screws. Also, this lock body requires two longer screws and two shorter screws. And Big Red, thinking ahead and also recognizing that you might be working with a safe that has heavier gauge steel or lighter gauge steel, they give you some options. You've got two long screws, two medium length screws, and two short screws. So I might use two long screws and two medium length screws, or the two medium length screws and the small screws. I'll find out which screws I need in a moment. Finally, this entry pad that I just removed, it slid over a couple of bolts in the door that looked fairly stout at first, but once I removed these, I realized these are very small screws that just happen to match the hardware provided by Big Red for installing the dial ring. And the dial ring has pre-drilled holes in it. It turns out these two holes match precisely the holes that are drilled and threaded in the door already. The next step is to take hold of your dial. This is called the spindle, and you want to locate the plastic bushing that comes with this set. Slide the bushing down over the spindle this way and seat it against the dial. And then what you want to do is thread this in through the front and into the back end of the lock, which is the drive cam. That's the drive cam. It's threaded inside, and at the moment, there's nothing holding this in place. So I'm going to hold my finger against this. Now, according to the instructions, I want to thread this in till it's snug. And I want the drive cam to be snug against the wheels or tumblers. What I'm going to do next is mark the spindle at the base here and then cut off the excess part of the spindle that I don't need. Now, before I cut the spindle where I've marked it, I'm going to thread on a tool that Big Red provides, and I'm going to screw this on past the point where I'm going to cut. Then I'll cut this and use a file to take off some of the burrs. Then I will thread this piece back out over the end to recondition the threads. Now, before I reinstalled the dial, I want to show you my diagram representing the drive cam at the back of the lock. 
These initials stand for vertical up, vertical down, left hand, and right hand. This is currently the way the drive cam is oriented. And again, I've got that lock installed with the bolt facing downward. On the inside of this piece, there are four notches coinciding with these different directions. And running the length of the spindle, there's a channel that creates a notch at the end you can see. I'm going to line up that notch with vertical down. Once I do that, it's going to bring the zero up to the 12 o'clock position. Then I'm going to tap into place a little piece of hardware called a spline key. And this is going to fit between these two notches and tie the drive cam to the spindle. And when I do this, I'm going to tap this in so that the flag end of the spline key is resting over the end of the spindle. Okay, at this point I am done screwing and unscrewing components. The lock is installed and I'm ready to start following Big Red's instructions for how to change the combination from the factory preset to a personal combination. They give you a tool here. They call this the changing tool. You may also find these referred to as combination change keys. But first, I have to replace the cover. That's kind of important. And now it's time for a teachable moment. Remember what I said about mechanical aptitude? <laughs> I made a mistake. I've already taken the cover off the lock. When I started playing with the dial, I could feel it abrading right away. So I'll bring the camera down to the side and hopefully you can see what I did. The dial is canted upward just slightly. So what I'm gonna to have to do is adjust the dial ring. I'm gonna to have to remove the spline key carefully so I don't damage the lock and adjust the orientation of this dial ring. And here is how I'm solving the problem. I've got magnets stuck on the door here holding the ring up in place and tape at the top. And I just tapped the ring around till I found the right place for it to be. And now the dial is working smoothly, no abrading. To mark the holes I'm going to drill I'm going to use a very small drill bit and scratch. By the way, before I start drilling and tapping my new holes, I should point out that while I was adjusting the position of this ring, I took advantage of the shielding here. There are two points and across these, I laid this level. So, because I want to make sure that this line is truly vertical. Now I can thread in the spindle and see how it works. That's what I want to see right there. And now for the spline key again. All right, now that I've got a dial that moves nice and smoothly, I'm going to resume the process of changing the combination. But before I do that, I need to show you something. This line right here is the index for dialing in your combination. And this line is the index for changing your combination. And as I walk us through the process, I may just leave my finger right here to remind myself to look at that line as I dial in my new combination. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works. First, I'll enter the default combination, which is three times counterclockwise past the number 50, stopping the fourth time on the number 50. 
and then turn the dial clockwise to draw back this bolt here. And now I can draw back the bolt assembly proper for the safe. Now what I'll do is enter that same default combination, but this time using the change index. Now it's time to insert the change key. The profile of this hole will only allow the key to go in one way. And you want to make sure that you insert this little flag piece all the way through. And the end of this key will stop when you reach the back of the lock. Then you want to turn the key 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now I'm going to start entering my new combination using the change index. I'll turn the knob counterclockwise past the first number of the combination three times, stopping on the fourth pass. One, two, three, four. Now clockwise past the next number of the combination twice, stopping on the third time. One, two, three, and then the third number of the combination counterclockwise, passing it once, stopping the second time. And that's it. Now I want to turn the key back. And it should slip right out. And now to test out my new combination, carefully shielded so you don't know what it is. It takes a little practice, but you get faster. And there it is, a newly retrofitted Rhino Metals Longhorn Strongbox with a big red lock. Pretty cool. I know. I know.